Good morning and blessed Sabbath, everyone. So um, I just wanted to remind um, the youth and the teenagers that um, they have, uh, they can follow Brother George downstairs, and so they all have their meeting um, on their own. So while the youth are leaving us, I just wanted to remind all of us to turn back to that time when you were young. Just to tie down with what Brother Delabor just mentioned, um, the purpose of our existence is to serve God, is to please Him. But just, just think, what is another name for God? We call God our, our Father, right? Our Father, so we are His children, correct. So as children, sometimes we complicate things, right? Just turn back to when you were, you know, five years old, six years old. What is the purpose of a child? What, is that, what does a child do towards his parents? It's not to bow down in front of the parents. It's not necessarily to worship them. It's just to, you know, enjoy their company, learn, be happy. And, you know, every day they grow and they learn they're happy, right? And so this is what God gives to us as well. He wants us to be happy. And even though we don't celebrate Christmas, but there are other occasions throughout the year where we exchange gifts, um, you know, whether it's personal occasions, whether it's family occasions, personally, as our, you know, as a family, we uh, have decided to celebrate our anniversary, wedding anniversary, as a family, you know, gathering where we exchange gifts and we prepare gifts for each other. And so when we have those occasions, you should see the, the light in the eyes of the children. Not so much when they receive gifts, but when they prepare those gifts for days, weeks before the event, they calculate the days and they, they, they just speak like this to each other. You know, what gift can we give mom or dad or each other? You know, and they prepare the best gift for us. And of course, sometimes those gifts are not, you know, what an adult would expect from another adult. But we are so happy because it comes with love. Love is what matters so much. And in, in this lesson today, we're going to see what gifts God gives us and what can we answer in, uh, towards his gifts. How should we react to a gift? In the text, in the key text in the lesson here in James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good gift and per every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Right? So God is giving us the best gifts. And whatever we can do is just express our thanks, maybe with a little drawing or a little um, leaf, you know, collage or something, you know, just, just something that kids do to, towards their parents. But that expresses love. In the notes, it says, God is love. Like rays of light from the sun, love and light and joy flow out from him to all his creatures. It is his nature to give. His very life is the outflow of unselfish love. All right, so this is the purpose of God. God wants to give. And what does God give us as our first gift? In question one, um, you know, here it says, the question A says, after bestowing life upon humanity, what else did God provide? Salvation. I'm sorry? Salvation. Salvation, yes, that's true. But right after creating us, did he leave us idle? Yes, brother? Yes, as you said, that he provided a beautiful garden for him. And he told him to dress it and to keep it. As uh, our creator is not idle, so Adam should continue in that type of character and, uh, and, and, and be occupied all the time. That's very true. Thank you very much. So, you know, my, my three-year-old daughter, she's um, three and a half, and, and now school has started, right? So... I'm busy with the other kids, you know, teaching them. And, and, and then she says, you know, Dad, what can I do now? I'm bored. Can you give me something to do? And, you know, this is sometimes an annoying question because, you know, we're busy, we're doing things, that, but children need something to do. In the same way, we need work. Work is actually not a curse. It's a blessing. It's not something that we need to do just to sustain our families. It is actually a blessing when we do what we're designed to do. Um, and the, the follow-up question is, why is this a blessing to us? Why do, you, why do you think work should be a blessing to us? 
How do you feel after a good day of labor when you look at your work, whether you've built something, you have a, a developed a program, you have done whatever you do during the day, something that you're proud of, how do you feel after a full day of work? Yes, sister? After a full day of work and labor, you have a good sleep. You right. sleep restfully and um, you enjoy the labor that you have accomplished. And, today, and then um, you have uh, deep rest to uh, revive yourself for the next day's labor. Correct. Thank you very much. So you are happy because you have done some good work. Yes, Brother Joe. Yes, pleasure. That's right. So, you know, we're not supposed to just ask God to give us things. Sometimes we pray, Lord, give us, give me that, give me this. You know, the Lord says work. Work is supposed to supply our needs. Help yourself and God will help you, right? Um, our needs are supposed to be supplied by our work. Now, of course, we can't do everything. You know, sometimes in North America, we've had the tendency of thinking that if we need something, we just go to work, get money, and then buy it, right? And so there are things that we are unable to provide for ourselves. What are we unable to provide for ourselves? This is question B. What daily evidences reveal God's abundant love for us? Things that we are unable to provide for ourselves. Things that money cannot buy. Salvation, yes, that's true. We are coming to that. But what else? In the verses, what comes every day? What blessings comes, uh, come to you every day? Gift of life. That's right. Life. You know, it's, here it says, the blessings come like rain. Yes, sister. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, rain from heaven, fruitful seasons. We think we buy the food, but that it actually comes from God. It's a gift from God. Correct. Foods don't come, you know, they, they, they don't grow in the stores, <laughs> right? So they come because God blesses. And God blesses every day. He provides things that we're not able to buy. Yes, brother. It's interesting in the note here, on this big question, we have a second paragraph. Mm -hmm. The Lord has given his life to the trees and vines of his creation. His word can increase or decrease the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. If men would open their understanding to discern the relation between nature and nature's God, faithful acknowledgments of the creator's power would be heard. This is a Thanksgiving weekend. Right. Uh, this country was founded by believing Christians mm -hmm. who came to these shores and recognized God's abundant provisions and his mm -hmm. care. And it's sad that we see departure. More and more people are becoming atheists, agnostics, turning away from God. Mm -hmm. How much we should ex ex uh, express our appreciation and gratitude for every gift we receive every day from God. That's right. That's correct. So... You know, we receive so many things and sometimes we don't realize it but because we are like children. And again, I come back to that, you know, point. We are children. And as a child, you know, you, you've, most of you have had children or, you know, still have children. And as um, a child, your child does not necessarily realize all the things you do for them. They're just kids. They just enjoy life, right? But you provide a lot. Most of your time is actually for them. And so children just, just are not necessarily thankful. They're just, they're happy to, you know, be served, but they need to cultivate the spirit of thanks. Thanking you for the things you do for them. Gratitude. And this is a spirit we need to have. As Brother Walter said, you know, this is a Thanksgiving weekend. We're supposed to cultivate this spirit of gratitude. Be happy for what you get from the Lord. Now, Above all, and this is where we're coming to salvation now on the, uh, the part of Monday, what is the greatest of God's gifts? The most important one? Yes, sister? His son. Yes, his son, Jesus Christ. Um, in, in Ephesians 2, um, it says that we are saved by grace. We are saved through Jesus Christ our Savior. How is this the greatest gift? Can anyone explain me why is that an important gift? I mean, 
if someone that you, you know, a stranger to you and me, um, dies for you 2,000 years ago, why is this something important? Yes, brother? Of sin that man has fallen into the condemnation of sin is death. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should have died. Instead of that, God provided remedy through his son, that through his son, we may have life eternal. Right, so life is something that money cannot buy. There are some people that are, you know, sick. They go to the hospital, they pay doctors millions of dollars to find the cure, to find something, and they can't find it. Grace and life, and especially eternal life, can only come from our Father. It is a free gift of God. And you know, when people receive gifts, um, sometimes they're grateful, sometimes they think, where's the trick? It's too good to be true. What? Salvation is free? You can, you can be in heaven for eternity and... and, and that, that's free, and they ask, where is the trick? Now, I just wanted to read here a little uh, sentence in the notes, in the second paragraph of the note A. It says, the heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us all heaven in one gift. When you have children and you give them everything, do you expect them to give you things back in return? Well, they can't give it back. They can't give you a gift back that is worth the value of your life dedicated to them. You're willing to give your life for them. They can't give their life for you. They can't. They're unable to save you. You can save them from danger. So many times you've done that. And the Lord is giving us all heaven here, all heaven in one gift. Everything that he's able to give. And then, so we've been able to, you know, we've, we've been receiving that gift, and we cannot doubt that it, this is free. When we receive the gift, question B, it says, when we follow Christ and we receive the gift, what gift in turn does the father promise to his son? It's like a family exchange of gifts. <laughs> yes, sister. Yeah, he promises to give Christ. Mm -hmm. He promises to give us to Christ. He says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. So God gives to, the, to Jesus, he gives, when we choose to follow Christ, that's God's gift to Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So to me, you know, God and us, we're like a family. Right? I'm just going to, to, to use that analogy. Of course, I know that there is no mother you know, in heaven, but if we, if we use the analogy of the family, you have the mother and the father and the children, and they all serve each other. And my children are the best gift my wife gave me, right? Those are a wonderful gift that she gave me. She had, you know, a lot of pain and efforts to give those gifts and to raise them, and they're wonderful. And in turn, you know, I give them to her as, you know, educate them, you know, raise them to be respectful and to be honest, uh, 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 you know, young adults one day. And this is the best gift I can give to her. You know, so this is the same thing God will do. He will take us, make us perfect, forgive us our sins, cover all our mistakes, and then in turn present them to Jesus Christ as his reward. What kind of blessing this is for Jesus to see the fruits of his work. It says that um, in James, it says that we are the first fruits of his creatures. Of all the things that are created, we're the best ones. Not because we're naturally best, but because he has cherished us so much. Um, anyone wanted to give some comments on that, uh, on that section? Yes, Sister Clover? This is um, the most wonderful gift we can ever think of. And sometimes people give you a gift and you don't realize the value of it. I remember somebody gave 
me a gift, and I didn't realize how valuable it was. Mm -hmm. And another person came and said, Sister Clover, this is very valuable. Where did you get it? And I said, somebody gave me. And from that, I started to, you know, take good care of it. Right. And we, God gave us this gift, and a lot of us don't realize mm -hmm. the value of it. You know, we play with it, and, you know, it's like the man on the, on the boat that had the pearl, and he was so happy, he threw it up, and he threw it up, and until it fall in the water. Mm -hmm. We have to realize this gift that God gave us. He gave everything, Amen. everything, and if we don't realize the value of the gift, we're going to lose out, you know, because there is nothing else that he, cannot do, that he can do for us. And if we don't appreciate this gift, then what is going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, so may the Lord help us that we will appreciate the gift. We will learn. And the problem is why we, some of us don't appreciate the gift. We don't realize that such love is really real. Right. He forgives us of everything. He makes us clean. He gives us a new page. And, and we still, when the enemy come and speak and said, you did this and you did that, we listen. Let us give the listening ear to the words that Christ is speaking, that everything that you did, I will erase it, and I will give you a new prayer. And that is what is going to keep us in the faith. Correct. Thank you so much. So um, in, in the last section of the, of the text, it says that uh, sometimes we don't know who we really are. You know, it's like if you come in contact with, um, you see a diamond that is not cut, right? Uncut diamond looks like a rock. You know, it, it has no beauty. It's a little bit transparent, but it has absolutely no beauty until you cut it. It says, nothing so dispels doubt as coming in contact with the character of Christ. When you see the, you know, someone gives you that rock and you have no idea what this is, it has no value to you. We have no value when we look at ourselves because we're not cut. We're not prepared to be a precious jewel, but the value is there. We have value in God's eyes, and we have to come in contact with the master, you know, um, uh, jeweler. Yes, brother? At creation, at creation, we were given a gift. Um, okay, no. To have dominion over the earth, but the second gift brings us further. We were mortal, now it's taking us further than Adam. Mm -hmm. The second Adam, the gift is taking us to heavenly places and not just life, but eternal life. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you so much. So when we come to the master jeweler and we see, you know, by coming in contact with a specialist, he tells us how much value we have. So who is that specialist? Who is that jeweler that is able to tell us how valuable the gift of life is to us? We go into Tuesday. Who is Jesus Christ, this master jeweler? It says, as we reverence the Heavenly Father as creator, which we studied in a previous lesson, what should we also understand about Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus to you? Yes, brother? Yes. But our light of fiction, uh, it talks about here, that uh, works for a moment, is uh, working out far exceeding way to glory, right? We don't look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen, which are everlasting. We have in view everlasting life. That's the whole objective of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, I preach that everywhere. I spoke to a, a broker, a century for, 21 broker. Uh, I did a big job for him. And we had exchanged our views on Bible and blessed hope uh, regarding my wife and things like that, that passed away. And he has precisely uh, very similar views. I thank God for people like that. Thank you. He gave yeah. me extra this, extra that, wealthy man. Uh, I just thank the Lord for that. There are enough Christians around there to support us. Mm -hmm. When we play the music, play the music, and I was singing my wife countless times. Thousands of people took videos and films and movies from friends from all over the world. You know, this is the ministry of music. It opens all the doors. It does miracles. Heals, heals my heart too. Mm -hmm. My son was playing that last night in our company. Uh, it just healed my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still grieving after one year, mm -hmm. after pa wife passing away. But thank God for blessed hope. 
It's a living reality. Get Amen. it in our head. Amen. A, God is, God is wonderful. He, he gives us so many assurances of His goodness. Yes, Brother Dalibor? Many times we don't really... Uh, I, how about this? Uh, I think many times we don't understand, you know, we don't appreciate, we don't fully comprehend who Christ is. Mm -hmm. when, he, when we are told that uh, by Him or through Him, the whole heaven is given to us. Correct. Do we really understand what that means? Yep. The whole heaven. So mm -hmm. if it would be no Christ, it would be no creations, it would be nothing. Do you understand that? Yep. Everything is through Him. Mm -hmm. Majesty of heaven. And he said on, uh, in, in the Revelation, King of kings, Lord of lords, everything is given un uh, unto me. Ev all the powers is given to me. So when you think about this, then you start to, you know, slowly comprehend. You know what? So everything is given to us. Through him, we have whole heaven. Everything. That's right. So sometimes we doubt the gift. Right? We say it's too good to be true. Sometimes we doubt the giver because we don't realize how, you know, God is so mighty, right? And he promises us give this gift. Yes, sister? Sorry, I mean, the question is largely emphasizing the point that Christ is God. Mm -hmm. He's the Word, the only begotten Son of God. He's one with the Eternal Father, one in nature, in character, and in purpose. The only being in all the universe that could enter into all the counsels and purposes of God. That's what God gave us. He gave us God. He gave us God in its fullest sense. And, and that the question asks, what should we also understand? And we don't understand. I'm sorry, but, but we just have to accept by faith that God is giving us, in giving us His Son, He's giving us God. Yes, yes. He, he's giving us everything He has. He, God is, you know, Jesus is God in the highest sense. That's what it says. In the, there's nothing higher than Jesus. Jesus is the highest already, right? And so he's giving us everything that is possible to be given. Now, question B is telling us, upon what basis is Christ entitled to our worship and discipleship? We mentioned already that, you know, because, you know, he is, in the previous lesson, as a father, he, be, he deserves our worship, but not only as our creator and father, but also as, as what? Question B. Not only his creator, but yes? Yes, here we have, uh, first, as we mentioned, through him, everything was created by mm -hmm. him, for him. So this is a very deep thought. Second thing, although he was in the form of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself and took a form of a servant. This is that famous emptying of the Son of God. Yes. He became one of us. Not the nature of Adam before the fall, but after the fall. Yes. And then Paul goes, he came lower and lower and lower to the death of the cross. Mm -hmm. The ignominious, I mean, a shameful death on the cross. So this is why he receives all glory and praise. Because he redeemed us. He paid the price for our salvation. And this is why all creatures... Angels, when they beheld, they did not understand the nature of God until Jesus completed his mission. Then they understood who God is. Correct. God is infinite love. And what is interesting in the note, nothing else, if this will not draw the sinner, God has nothing else in reserve. If people reject that great gift, there is nothing else that people can be saved. That's right. That's right. Um, and, and, you know, in the, at the bottom of the notes here on the Tuesday, it talks about the hands um, of the creator that are the hands that were nailed to the cross for us. And you probably know the story of this, um, this lady one day, you know, this mom one day, her daughter looks at her hands and didn't realize until now. And she sees she's, her mom's hands that are all shriveled. And she says, mom, you have ugly hands. And then the mom says, well, let me tell you a story. When you were a baby, our house burned down. And I was visiting the neighbor, and the neighbor told me, the house is burning down, and you were sleeping in the house by yourself. And so I rushed. The firefighters were stopping me to enter the house, and nothing could stop them. They, they could not prevent me from going. And I went inside, and I took your crib, and your crib were burning, was burning as I took you. And that's why my hands are all ugly for you. And that's what God's hands have been like this, they have been pierced, they have been 
they are ugly forever. They will always retain that hole for us. The creator of the universe. We're not the only, only ones in the universe. And he did all of that just for us here, just for you and me. Now, on their Wednesday, because of time, we have to move forward. It says, question A, what fundamental concepts should we learn from the example of Christ's earthly life? What kind of, I would say, two words that summarize Christ's experience on earth? Yes, brother? His life was a life of service, mm -hmm. as we can see from the verses and the note. And though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things with which he... He suffered. He was a servant, and yet he was obedient when he was on this earth. Thank you. Then that makes three words, all right? So we have service. He had a life of service. Now, service is one thing, but up to what point do we need to serve? Until what point? In the first sentence of the notes, can anyone tell me up to what point we have to serve? It says the foundation of the plan of salvation was laid in sacrifice so we have to serve we have to sacrifice and sometimes we're willing to do that but there's one other word in the text that sometimes we're not willing to do it says each in the middle of the paragraph it says each must have a spirit of self-denial and self-sacrifice the life of christ upon earth wasn't selfish it was marked with what humiliation and sacrifice and sacrificing i mean we sacrifice all the time we sacrifice our time we sacrifice a lot of things if we have a reward we're fine with it we're willing to sacrifice but with humiliation you know sometimes we're spoiled um last night i was you know talking with brother marion and, and we we're making sleeping arrangements still until last night and and we we're saying you know we we don't care where we sleep doesn't matter to me. I can sleep on the floor, on the chair, anywhere. doesn't matter to me. That's the life, you know, that we're supposed to have as ministers of the gospel and, and as Christians, I would say. And sometimes we're not um, willing to humble ourselves, right? Oh, yeah, we want to be, you know, we, we, we want to stay at someone and have all the comfort and, and that they give us a nice breakfast and everything. That's not the life of a Christian. That's not the life of Christ. No, we don't. We're spoiled. We don't want to humble ourselves. We want to sacrifice only for reward. Yes, My sister? What a beautiful lesson this is. That Amen. humiliation, that's the character of God. Mm -hmm. Meekness and humility. His life of sacrifice, his motive behind his service. And that's the love that is beyond compare. Amen. Amen. God's love is wonderful. He gives everything and he does not expect anything in return. No glory to himself. When Jesus receives glory, who does it give it to? He just passes it on to his father. And the father gives it back to him. They don't want to keep it. Question B, it says, in what sense are we to gladly follow Christ's example of sacrifice? We kind of talked about it. In the verse, it says, be ye not conformed to this world. What does this word look for? Honor, glory. They want to be praised. They want to be somebody in this world. And we don't want to be like this. Yes, brother, shortly? Yeah, just to continue. That, but it's for me that anyone will remind. Yes. Remember the will of God is, you know, our attitude as whether we are uh, church members or whether we are visitors should be what's, how can I contribute for the well, common well-being instead of what's in there for me? Never entertain that thought. Mm -hmm. How can we can be a blessing? Mm -hmm. And the blessing goes in circles. The more I help in my community, the more God blesses me. Beyond measure. That's Astronomical right. result. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. So as we re go into Thursday now, and we go into the, the last uh, section, um, God does not, again, I will repeat, God does not uh, expect anything from us but something comes from us naturally when we receive those things, when we see the love of God, when we see how much he has given. Um, what comes out naturally from your heart when we receive 
an unmerited favor, something you don't deserve, a gift you can't ever pay back. You know, in our society, sometimes we receive a gift and we want to give it back. We want to give something back because we don't feel good. And, and someone told me, when someone gives you a gift, just say thank you. Just say thank you and accept it. You don't have to return anything necessarily. You know? And so when God gives us a gift, what comes naturally from our mouth and from our actions? And question B, how should we respond to God's bountiful grace? Yes, brother? Brother Dalibor? You mentioned this in the beginning, that the gift comes without, you know, without, you know, no, no, no question. No ties. Asked. No ties attached. No tie. Well, there is something that God <laughs> wants from us. And he said, you know what? I want your heart. That's right. So this is a gift that we can do. Mm -hmm. Go back to him and say, you know what? I did this, this, and that. Thank you for your gift. Now I can give you back. And what is that that I'm giving you back? The character that you, you know, provided for me, I can mm -hmm. live life that you live and show others. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. Yeah. You know, we said this in the last in the review lesson. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. To show others that God was right when he was, you know, in the beginning was showing, you know, what is everything about, you know, what the love is about. Show others. Show others what the love is about. Amen. So when God gives us this wonderful gift and we give him his, our hearts, our hearts are all ugly and full of sin. And God takes it and shapes it and prepares it and gives it back to us. He doesn't want our hearts forever. He just wants to change our hearts and model it so that it be beautiful. You know, it'd be beautiful so that we can enjoy it and so that he can enjoy it. And love is shared among the family of God. So may God bless us and help us understand that love that we, you know, share comes back to us. May God be blessed for all the beautiful things that he does to us. Amen.